Hey everyone, Mike here with everythingaboutconcrete.com. This video is going to be about when to start finishing concrete. Whether you're doing a patio, a concrete floor, a driveway, stamp concrete, the basics are usually all the same. The timing is, is a little different on each thing, and the weather plays a big part in that timing. But I'm going to show you what we do to check the concrete and how we like to start our finishing process, the timing of it. That's the hardest thing to learn if you're new to this business or if you're just learning to be a concrete finisher. So this video is all about when to start. There's a couple examples I'm going to show you and we'll talk it through. And then after this video, you should have a real good idea of when to start finishing concrete. You can see if I press my fingers in there now, I'm only going down about a quarter to three eighths. So we're getting real close. Two hours after the pour when we're gonna start finishing. What I'm gonna do with this part here is I'm gonna get on it with my skids and I'm gonna mag it out real nice and then we're gonna put a broom finish on it. Exactly two hours after we got done pouring. You can see we're putting an edge on this front piece. This front piece, you can see if you see that string right there, so this front piece slopes an inch and a half this way and that's this part will be just like a screened in porch going to have a room finish that's going to have a power trial finish so the finishing process is just starting here we are two hours after the pour push down with our fingers right now i can still push in pretty easily about three eighths of an inch so that tells me it's not quite ready yet we got probably another half an hour we'll come back and check it again we want it to be a little bit firmer than that so there's the first there's the first one we check now i'm going to press again yeah it's a little firmer but i would say it's still a little bit too soft to get on yet so i'm going to give it a few more minutes before we, we get a mag float this all out it looks to me like it's got a few more minutes before we got to get going here so i'll probably give it another 15 20 minutes and then we'll come back and just check it again So when you're learning how to finish concrete, you know, the timing is really everything. And there's a lot of variables that go into the timing. The concrete really needs to be a certain firmness. Like you saw, I could only press down maybe a quarter to three eighths of an inch when I checked it. And most of the time on most finishes, that's still going to be a little too early to start the finishing process. You want to be able to press in about an eighth of an inch, you know, three sixteenths. Then you know you're getting real close. And it kind of depends on what you're doing. You can see right here, we could press in about an eighth of an inch when we started doing this. And you can see this, it works up pretty easily still, and there's still quite a bit of paste at the surface. So the concrete's not too hard, but it's still a little too soft to do like a broom finish or a stamp finish or even get on with a power trowel. If you tried to step on this right now, you'd sink in probably a quarter to three eighths of an inch. Even if you could only push in maybe a quarter to an eighth of an inch with your fingers. So that right there is, is the beginning of it. And that's what Darren's doing right now. It's about that firmness right now, about an eighth of an inch we could press in. And if you can mag it up pretty easy, but it's too early for a power trial. It's too early just to broom over that. So, but it's not too early to mag out like your bow float lines and any other imperfections you have in that if you have a set of skids like Darren's using right there a set of knee boards or skids or sliders those are called all kinds of different things I have a link for those down in the description too if you guys are looking to get some of those but we're gonna go over this part right now this is gonna be a broom finish patio here like I said earlier but it's too early to broom it right now we're gonna have to get this magged out and let it dry up for another 20 or 30 minutes before we run the broom over it. Otherwise, the broom marks are just going to be too rough and it's not going to look really good. So we'll get it magged out initially. You can see where there's a little bit of a slurry on top because there was some plastic under this. So we're working that slurry off. If we have to, if we have to physically take it off with the mag and the hand trial, you know, we'll pick it up, take the slurry off, get it off the slab just so we can get this to dry up a little quicker. And in the meantime, the slab over there on the left, the house slab is, is getting ready, but it's not quite ready to put a power trowel on. So 
this this particular job it was two hours after the pour and we're right about at this point two hours to two hours and 20 minutes to the, and that gets us here but it's it's like 70 degrees out today so if it was hotter if it was 90 and out in the sun we would have been on this at least an hour earlier probably um, we wouldn't have had to wait two hours we probably only would have waited an hour so the the temperature plays a big part in the timing being out in the sun plays a big part versus being in the shade and the type of mix you're using also plays a big part whether you're using a a 2,500 pound mix, a 3,000 PSI mix, a 4,000 PSI mix. Usually the higher the PSI, the faster the mix will cure up because there's more cement in it. And then what also makes it cure up a little faster is if the mixer truck has a long drive to get to your job. If it's a 15 or 20 minute ride from the concrete plant, then that's not going to dry up as fast as let's say he had an hour to an hour and a half drive, you know, the longer that concrete mix is in the truck, the quicker it's going to set up after you get it poured out like this too, because it's starting to heat up inside there. It's starting the the process of hydration. So you got to keep that into account too. So here it is, about two hours in uh, 30 minutes or so after the pour, we got on it with a power trowel. When Luke got on it with a power trowel, he was only sinking in. You know, maybe a sixteenth of an inch with his footprints. And we're on the patio part now, mag floating it for the second time. You can see where Darren's mag floating it and where I'm mag floating it. It's a little bit different color than that middle section we haven't mag floated yet. So you can tell that part's dried up a little bit versus the part we're going over again. And as we're mag floating it again, we mag float it twice because we live in Maine and we have air entrainment in our concrete. You guys down in the south where you don't have to worry about freeze and thaw, you can you can hand trowel this. We generally don't hand trowel exterior concrete because it it could seal up the surface a little bit and trap some moisture or some air under the surface, and then that could bubble or blister off later on. So we usually we'll mag float it twice like this if we have to, and that just helps keep the surface a little bit more open. And then when we run the broom over it, like I am right now. That opens up the surface a little bit more, but because the concrete's really firm now, it, it's leaving a really nice light room finish that's, you know, it's going to be easy to walk on, it's going to be a lot easier to keep clean, and it just looks a lot nicer too. If you room finish it too early, you know, there's a chance the paste in the, in the aggregate in the concrete mix hasn't bound up enough yet and you could you could actually roll some of the aggregate in there and have some stones showing on the surface and you don't want that that doesn't look real good all you want to do is broom that paste on the surface and that paste will give you a really nice light boom finish like what I'm doing right now so the patio area which is broom finished is going to be done as soon as I get done this last pass uh, Darren's going to go back and he's going to run the finished edger around it. You'll see that here in a second. And Luke is just getting started with the power trial. So, you know, today, 70 degrees out in the sun. Got about a 5-inch thick slab here. We had, uh, you know, the edges were about 12 inches thick. All on styrofoam with plastic under it. So about two and a half hours after the pour, she's starting to go now. You can see Darren, he's putting that finished edge on it now. And then that part will be done. And then we'll just, you know, worry about the power trial part of this slab. So the timing, the timing is, you know, you check it. You have to continually check it after the pour, depending on your weather conditions and your concrete mix. You know when you can only press in a quarter, three-eighths of an inch that you're getting close, but you're still too early. When you get to about an eighth of an inch, you can press in with your fingers. Then you could check it by either just, you know, mag floating it, starting to mag float it. You could try putting some foot pressure on it if you're power troweling. If you, if you sink in with your foot more than a quarter of an inch, that's way too early to stop power troweling usually. And it's going to depend a little bit on the size of the project you're doing too when you start. You see Darren's now walking in there doing those edges right where that the concrete floor you know, transitions into the concrete patio, and he's he's not sinking at all. 
he's just gonna mag he's gonna hand trial that part because that's gonna end up being inside the house right there so that won't be exposed to any weather but the timing is really key and learning that timing is hard to do if you're not working for somebody like you know like us on the job where somebody's gonna teach you and show you the actual time so this is the next best thing on video if I can just show you the time how we check things pretty much every day on every job no matter what we do we got to check and it's it like I said it's different some days it's an hour after the pour some days it's 30 minutes after the pour some days it's two hours like this one today but it's different on every day depending on mostly depending on what the weather is outside so we're just going to finish this up guys if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet please subscribe thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one